hello friends welcome back to the channel well in today's video we are going to be talking about partition schemes and how important they are to storage devices that you have well gone are the days where you could just have one terabyte of storage on your pc and then you are fine with that even nowadays two terabytes might not be enough to store most of the information that you need especially if you do gaming video editing among others now this is where partition scheme come into play partition scheme is just a way of organizing and managing the various partitions that you have on your disk and what are partitions by the way now you can visualize these partitions just like the way you have your house with different compartments you have the rooms you have the kitchen the hall and all that and they serve different purposes well that is how partitions on the disk too are they are just um logical or virtual compartments that you have on the disk and you can use it to store whatever you like to do. The partition scheme determines how data is stored and accessed on your storage device. So for each partition scheme that we have, um, essential information that is needed for record keeping is stored inside the partition table. Some examples of information that can be found on the partition table include the partition type, be it an active partition or a logical partition. With active partitions, you are able to store operating system boot information and also just um, your regular data. But with logical partitions, you can store just your data and not the operating system information. You also have the partition size and where it starts and ends within the disk. The file system type 2 counts, be it NTFS, FAT32, um, you have RAW, you have EXT4, all these ones are stored inside the partition table. Currently, we have two types of partition schemes, the MBR and GPT. If you've tried any form of Windows installation or formatting, you may have come across these under the partition scheme section. The master boot record is usually found on older systems that use BIOS for startup. And it usually supports just four primary or active partitions. So if you want to go beyond four, you have to use logical partitions, which are not bootable. It also has a disk limit size of just two terabytes. On the other hand, the grid partition table supports unlimited partitions, roughly 128 on most operating systems, and it has a disk size limit of 9.4 zettabytes. It also has a redundant partition table that is used for recovery just in case the primary partition table gets corrupted. Alright, now that you know enough about partition schemes, let me take you through the various ways that you can check the partition status of your storage devices. For Windows users that can access their desktop, you can simply search for partition on your search bar or you right click on the start menu and select disk management. Inside the management tool, you should see the different disks that you have on your PC, be it external and internal uh, storage devices. And then for each one, you get to see the different partitions that you have on them. Um, the first one has my Windows operating system with some recovery partitions as well. And then the second one has other forms of data I need, including my Ubuntu dual boot there. To check the partition of any of them, you simply select it, right click on it, and then go to properties. And then under the volume tab, you should see the partition style there. Mine shows GPT. And that is what I'm using for both storage devices. But if for some reason you are not able to right click on the storage device, you can simply select it and also go over to the tools that you have here. We have the properties um, icon here, click on it, and then you should be able to see the partition style as well. So for users that are not able to access their desktop, be it the operating system has crashed or it just can't boot into it, what you could do is to boot into the recovery mode during startup and then select the troubleshoot option. Go to advanced options and then you can click on command prompt. It should open an administrative command prompt for you and then you can type in the following commands. The disk part command opens up a tool where you can list the various disks that you have on your PC. And then within the list, you see that it has different properties. You have the disk number, the status, and then you also have a, the GPT property there. Now, if it's a storage device that uses GPT, you'll see there'll be a star and asterisk 
attached to the GPT column, simply meaning that it's GPT. But if there's no star or asterisk there, then it means that you are using MDR. Once you know this, you can shut down the PC and then continue the bootable process using Rufus or any other bootable software you are using. Now, Linux distros were not left out. I've used Ubuntu in this case, but it should work for most other uh, distros that you have out there. Go to the apps menu and then select the utilities drawer. Under the utilities drawer, you should see the disk app. Now, once it's open, if you select any of the disk that you have there, it should show you the partition under the partitioning section. So what can you do if you have MBR and then you want to switch to GPT? Maybe because you have more than 2 terabytes of storage. Or what can you do if you want to convert from GPT to MBR for some reasons? Fortunately for us, the disk part tool is able to handle it for us. You check for the disk number using the list disk. In our case, it's disk 2. So we select disk 2. And then we can also list the partitions under it. Now, before you continue, you will need to format the hard disk to continue. So I advise you to back up all your data before you continue with this. If you try converting without formatting the disk, it's not going to allow you. But with certain third party apps, you are able to do the conversion without formatting. You have an example like a mini partition wizard. The clean command does the formatting and after which we can do the conversion. If you are converting to MBR, it will just be convert MBR. If it's to GPT, we have convert GPT. Once the process is done, you can create a new volume on the storage device and then copy over your data again. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you learned something new in this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. Like, subscribe and share to others as well. And until next time, have a nice day.